What up, world? I'm King Rain, and this is another episode of Sweet Sixteens, where we get your favorite artists to spit the sweetest lyrics they ever wrote. This episode, we have what every community, every city, every borough has. You know, that person, that artist with integrity, who who represents culture, represents community, who represents something. And we have this time on our show for this episode, Ian Kamal, the Toronto representative. What up, fam? Maybe I'll tell you, tell you secrets and tell you lies. Tell you, everything good? I'm good. I can't complain. Let's let's get into the writing because this this show's about the lyrics. Yeah. How did you? Where did you start? You know, um, I mean, let's take it back to your first rhyme. What inspired you to write that first rhyme? What got you there? Um, I think when I was maybe 15, 16 years old. Yeah. Um, my cousin was living with me. My cousin, yeah. his name is Roger Mooking. <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, he had just moved from Edmonton, mm -hmm. and uh, he stayed with us for about a year or something. And I used to watch him write, you know. So I had a book, and basically, uh, I started writing, but I never showed anybody. And so eventually, I had all this stuff. And my boy Danilo, I was at his place one day, and he was like, "I know you're writing." And I'm like, "Yeah, but it's just like it's just for me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I he was like, "Show me." And so up on Sullivan Street. In, at, uh, in his apartment, I said, the first time I ever said a rhyme out loud was to one of my best friends, Danilo. Nice. You see, what's funny about that is that that story is universal. There's, you know, you hear Nas talk about it. He thought, he thought niggas wouldn't understand. Yeah. Now <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah. the fucking man. It's like, that's how I felt, too. How was it? Did this, you know, what was his name again, sir? Danilo. Danilo. How yeah. did, did you guys join the group or... Was he a well, was we, he MC we were too? like, yeah, he was an MC too. We were in a group together, like very, very early. I won't mention the name of that group. No, we, both, we both, no, we both, <laughs> we both. That's what we do on this show. We had Sunfield on here. He gave his original name. It was MC Deliberate, I think. <laughs> 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 so you got it. You got to give it up. Um, it was Elements of Thought. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that bad. <laughs> Think about the, the the names that were back back then. That yeah, no, sense. no, no. Yeah. So what was it? What were the elements of thought? Like what would, what was it that you were? What was your direction back then? Direction. We were like we we're fifteen, bro. <laughs> we didn't we didn't have a direction. So so it was just random. <laughs> so okay, that's what that's what I'm leading to. Where did it get to? Like how did it get to where you are now? I used to go. I used to go to one of those uh, outlet malls before school started to get like school clothes. Uh -huh. I live way. I've always lived downtown, so it was up in the north side of the city. I had to take the Bathurst bus all the way up. And I was listening to uh, only built for Cuban links. <laughs> like, so I'm not exam. I don't know what year it was. I was a teenager, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not, obviously. Um, and the Nasverse came on. Uh, through the lights, cameras, and action, glamour, glitters, and gold, I unfold the scroll, plant seeds, the stampede, the globe, etc., etc. Right. And it felt like uh, my father's a writer, as you know. Mm -hmm. And it felt like I was writing poetry and I was writing verses. And I had separated right. verses and poetry. But in hearing that Nas verse, because I had been writing for a couple of years at that point in time, in hearing that Nas verse, I was like, you could put together what I viewed as verses and what I viewed as poetry into one thing. And I feel like that was a that was the beginning of what would end up being a style that I was interested in. Like can you write it down on a page and it translate in the same way that when you say it out loud. I remember Rakim saying I saw an interview, I read something where he was saying that um he didn't curse on his songs because he thought he knew that his parents were gonna hear it. Yeah. Um <laughs> and I remember one of your lyrics yeah, yeah. from back in the day that said um, something along the lines of you didn't want to bring your family shame. Mm -hmm. Coming from two parents who, you know, great artists and, and mm -hmm. writers and, you know, thinkers. Mm -hmm. Did that play a role in, in you deciding to take the direction that you took? Well, it's, it's funny because my parents always cursed at home. <laughs> it was, I never had like a... <laughs> I, well, I never really had to censor myself in any crazy way at home. Anyway. I had a lot of freedom, you yeah. know what I mean? So I think because I had a lot of freedom, I held myself in a certain way because I had nothing to rebel against necessarily, right, right, you know what I mean? Right, but right. 
but my f my parents and my family in general were interested in what I was doing. I, that's a privilege that I had that a lot of people didn't have. They were doing hip hop music or whatever, and their parents like knew that they were doing it, but they weren't like, "What did you mean here? Like, what did you mean here?" Like, you know, it was kind of a separate thing that they did with their peers. You know, yeah. so. I remember once the probably the best story I could think about in relation to that is like my grandmother, she's 97 now, she was probably like 80 in her early 80s at the time, came to Toronto, stayed with me and my mom. She stayed for 10 days and I had a show in the middle of the 10 days. It was Mindbender show, the first one that he used to do down on Queen Street. I can't remember the name of it. Like and my grandmother's like, "Oh, you're having a show? I'll come." <laughs> so my no like pressure. my like old 80 something year old Trinidadian grandmother in her like little floral <laughs> like dress. Nice, that's a beautiful thing. Came down to the venue with all these hip hop guys when we were like 17, 18, and like came and watched the show. Wow. Every time I put a song out or something, or really the, or the record specifically, I send them like to my grandmother's house on Saddle Road in Marival in Trinidad. So I know they're going to listen to it. How many, how many MCs can say that? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> After I finish a joint, I send it to my <laughs> my grandpa. And so it's like it's there's some level of responsibility. I think it can also be a barrier though to yes. being a certain to being an artist and being able to express freely. Yes. Like be able to speak about sex or mm -hmm. be able to talk about, you know, some more harsher things that exist in life. I think it can be a barrier to that. Um but I think now given, you know, where I'm at now, I think my family would understand be, me being able to explore those things with more maturity as yeah. opposed to just talking shit. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's what it is at the end of the day. They just want to see us represented, yeah. you know, in a good way. But moving on, though, like, when you, when you write now, is there a process that you have? Yeah, I usually write to music um, okay. because I used to not have access to music. Right. And so yeah. now, like, I do, I do my own stuff. Or people send me things, mm -hmm. and but I and I just find rhythmically it makes most sense rhythmically and melodically it makes more sense to write to music because you're making music. Like there was a time I felt like I had writer's block. I didn't write for years, yeah. which just meant like I didn't sit down and like put pen to paper mm -hmm. and actually write out an entire verse. But I had so much stuff like just random things come into my head on a regular basis. I see something, I think about two three words come together and. I'll put it somewhere mm -hmm. and always save it and then go back and take those things and actually figure out, okay, there are a bunch of things on these on this theme. Do these things make sense together and how can I fill in the gaps of those things? Okay. But I very rarely sit down and write like an entire thing. And even if I do, it's usually based on something that I was already putting together. I used to put more effort into the 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 words like whether or not the words were uh, expressing the complicated idea right. as opposed to trying to communicate a complicated idea in a simple way love the way you just put that so that people can understand it like you know what i mean yep. because sometimes it's like you have a bunch of things in your head it's not like i'm on some level of understanding but at the same time, it's like you have time to think about and craft something. And that means that naturally it can have like uh, a lot more uh, just it can be more complicated. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be. And just because it's a um, maybe an idea that may be complicated or a story or a narrative that has like different sides to it and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean need to be communicated in some complex way, because at the end of the day, um, the goal of art, I believe, is really to communicate with other people. Yep. You know what I mean? So out of all the artists that you've, you know, that you've heard over your time, what would you say would be your top five? Oh my alive? God. <laughs> or at least give us some that Artists, influence. period? Period. Not just, definitely not just hip hop. I mean, give us, give us, in terms of artists, yes. John Coltrane. Nice. Andre 3000. Mm -hmm. Tom York. I don't have no idea who Tom York is. He's the front man from Radiohead. Oh, my bad. Come Sorry. on, bro. Horrible. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, then there's like so many more that could like. Can you say that there's one thing that attracted you to all of them? Is there one spirit character nice. that they're individuals? Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't. No one can say that Andre 3000 or Frank Ocean or Tom York aren't individuals. Bjork, 
Like those people are individuals and they express themselves creatively as that individual or some uh, exaggerated version of whoever they are. You can hear them inside of what they do. You know what I mean? And so you relate to an artist as an individual because you can hear their story. Like if you think about like, yeah, think about a guy like uh, Jay-Z. Yep. You know what I mean? Jay-Z is a talented rapper. And if you think about his story, you think about, oh, you think about his mom, you think about Marcy, you think yeah. about him leaving Marcy, you think about what he used to do, you think about what he does now, you think about his businesses, you think about, you know, his separation with Dash, you think about his connection with B, you think about, you know what I mean? Like, you can hear a person's entire story, and then that person has a style and a character that comes out in the way that they communicate. And so there's no one else you can go to for that, you know? like. Yeah. If you if you want to go, you there's a there's probably a hundred thousand Jay Z impersonators, but the reality is, there's only one, one Jay Z, and the, my favorite artists are all those that type of individual. Like you can't you could try to sound like Bob Marley, but everybody in the world would be like, you sound like Bob Marley. Exactly, there's only one Bob Marley, and people are interested in the man himself. Mm. Um, well, can you make all those influences proud? <laughs> and give us your sweet sixteen. You know, the Sweet 16 that tells us about you and your segue, story. By the way. Uh, yeah, I try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A crimson blood stain draws a line in the snow. Cold as the love, I'm reminded to show. A friend of mine passed, I'm surprised by the blow, so afraid by the way he decided to go. Though we see the seeds he decided to sow. I'm ashamed by the things I decided to know, and those things I did not know or he did not share. I only hope he did not think that we did not care. Eagle wings in a lion's frame, a lion's heart. Though I hope you didn't die in vain, I don't know God. We don't show our other side when the times are hard. Every moment in the deck, they may pull your card. Life's a stage, everybody plays a part. When the curtain falls, it's certain we'll be staring down the dark. Staring in the dark, or we have his love and art speeding towards an ending like we've been ascending from the start. Yes. Thank you, family. And that one was about our good friend Adrian, right? Yeah. And Adrian, if you're hearing this, we still love you, homie. Yeah, bro. And this was another episode of Sweet Sixteens. Uh, I love. I can't wait to to watch this back. <laughs> I can't wait to watch <laughs> this back. Thank you again, brother. Yeah, man. Good to see you. All man. right. Keep it locked. Sweet Sixteens, y'all. Peace. Yes, that was another episode of Sweet Sixteens with my man Ian Kamal. I mean, I know y'all gonna get a lot out of it. Most of the writers and artists, I would recommend you watch this episode, please. Um, go back and check our old episodes. If you know anybody that you feel should be on our show, let me know. Also, this is another um, episode, but we also have a lot more coming down the line. So please stay stay with us and keep watching. Uh, I go by the name of King Rain, Exclaim Media, Rain Media. Peace. <laughs>